In this video, I'm going to teach you how to balance redox reactions in acidic solution and also in basic solution, and I'll be using this as my example. Before we get started, I want to warn you, balancing redox reactions is quite a bit trickier than normal balancing of chemical equations. One of the reasons why it's a little bit trickier is that it's very normal for an unbalanced redox reaction to um, be missing at least one reactant uh, or at least one product. So there's a high probability that there is a reactant missing from this unbalanced equation or a product missing or maybe both. And so not only do we have to balance the equation, but we also have to figure out what these missing reactants and products might be. So the first step to balancing a redox reaction is to divide it into half reactions. We're going to balance the half reactions one at a time. Dividing into half reactions is not as intimidating as it sounds, typically because there are only two reactants in an unbalanced redox reaction, and each one of them just gets assigned to one of the half reactions. So for example, um, we're just going to take this Fe2+, plus. that's going to be our reactant for, we're going to call this half reaction number one. And then our other reactant, CR2O7-, minus. this is going to be our half reaction number two. So we've just, you know, randomly assigned each reactant into one half reaction. Now we need to do the same for our products over here. We have to figure out where they go in these half reactions. Remember I said that we might have some missing reactants and products. So I'm going to leave myself quite a bit of space um, to fill in any missing reactants and products that we might find here. Here's my arrow. And now what I'm going to do is take product number one, Fe3+, and I'm going to assign it to one of these half reactions. And I'm going to do this just using kind of just using common sense. So where does it make the most sense for the Fe3 plus to go? When I'm talking about using common sense, I mean, look at what you're starting with and where does it make the most sense for the Fe3 plus molecule to end up? And half reaction number one uses Fe2 plus, and so it is most logical that Fe3 plus will also be part of half reaction number, number one. And then in terms of the other product, Cr3 plus, this makes the most sense to go into half reaction number two because half reaction number two also has chromium. Um, and it's never gonna be really tricky for you to figure out where these reactants and products belong. So like I said, we're going to balance each half reaction individually, and we have to do this balancing in a particular order. We can't just start balancing like we normally would. First thing that we have to do is balance all of the atoms that are not oxygen or hydrogen. So in this situation, we have iron and we have chromium, and those are the first atoms that need to get balanced. In half reaction number one, we have one iron on the left and one iron on the right, so that's already done. In half reaction number two, we have two chromiums on the left and only one on the right, so we're just going to change that stoichiometric coefficient, so now our chromiums are balanced. Once we get all of the atoms balanced that are not oxygen and hydrogen, the next atom that we're going to balance is oxygen, but we're not going to do it in the normal way. And like here is why. We've got seven oxygen atoms on the left, but we have zero oxygen atoms on the right. So we can't balance oxygen like we normally would just by changing a stoichiometric coefficient. The only way that we can balance oxygen atoms in a redox reaction is by adding water molecules. So in half reaction number two, we have seven oxygen atoms on the left, we need seven oxygen atoms on the right, and we're going to do that by adding seven water molecules to the right. So that gives us those seven oxygen. Even if you do have oxygen atoms as reactants and products, and even if you could balance oxygen atoms by changing coefficients, that is not what you do when you're balancing redox reactions. When you're balancing a redox reaction, the only way that you balance oxygen is by adding water molecules. The last atom we have to balance is our hydrogen. And just like with oxygen, we don't balance hydrogen by changing coefficients. We balance hydrogen by adding the H plus ion. So in half reaction number two, we have a total of 14 hydrogen atoms on the, on the right hand side. That means we need 14 hydrogen atoms on the left hand side. And we're gonna do that by adding 14 H plus ions to the left hand side. 
Now all of the atoms are balanced in both of our half reactions, but we're still not done. The next thing that we have to do is balance the charges in our half reactions. And this is something that we did not have to do when we did normal balancing of equations. We're gonna balance the charges by adding electrons. Now first, let me just talk a little bit about what we were, are referring to here when, we, when we're saying balance the charges. In half reaction number one, the left-hand side has a total of plus two for its charge, and the right-hand side has a total of plus three. So these, these, um, this equation is unbalanced in terms of its charge. We have a plus two on the left and we have a plus three on the right. We need to balance the charges of the left side and the right side, and we can only do that by adding electrons, which are negatively charged. So what we have to do is find the left side or the right side, which one has a higher charge, plus two versus plus three. Plus three has a higher charge. We're gonna be adding electrons to the side with the highest charge. I'm gonna make a note of that down here. Our right-hand side is the side with the high charge. We want to bring this plus 3 down to a plus 2 so that it's balanced. And we'll do that by adding one electron to the right-hand side. So now our left-hand side is plus 2, and our right-hand side is plus 3 minus 1, which is also a plus 2. Let, and this step right here is the trickiest step for most students. So let's practice it again. Obviously, we need to charge balance half reaction number two. Um, the, on the left-hand side of half reaction number two, our total charge over here is minus two plus 14. So minus two plus 14 gives us a total of plus 12. Minus 2 plus 14 equals a positive 12. And on the right-hand side, we have a total of plus 6. 2 chromium, 3 pluses, 2 times 3 plus is a plus 6. So again, we find the side that has the higher charge. It's plus 12. And we're going to add electrons to this side, the left-hand side, to bring its charge down to a plus 6. So that means we need to add six electrons to this side. Now, one way that you can tell that you're doing this correctly is that the electrons should be on the right-hand side of one equation and the left-hand side of the other. Remember that one of these is the oxidation, the loss of electrons, and the other one is going to be the reduction. So that means that we should have electrons on the right-hand side for one and on the left-hand side for the other. All of that work, and we're still not all the way done. So I'm gonna bring this over, copy this over to the next slide so we can keep going. Our next step here is to multiply each one of our half reactions so that each half reaction has the same number of electrons. So in our half reactions here, half reaction number one has only one electron, but half reaction number two has six. So what we want to do is make sure that both of these half reactions have the exact same number of electrons. That means for half reaction number one, I want to multiply all of my stoichiometric coefficients by six. This way, I'm going to have six electrons in number two and six electrons also in number one. Now we're almost done. What we're going to do next is put these two half reactions back together. So we're just going to combine them with each other. I am going to begin by writing all of the reactants, all of them together. For half reaction number one, I have 6Fe2+. I also have Cr2O7 2 minus in half reaction number two. And in, still in half reaction number two, 14H plus and six electrons. For my products in half reaction number one, I have six Fe3 plus, six electrons. And then in half reaction number two, I have two Cr3 plus and seven H2O. Now, uh, what we want to do next is simplify. And by that, I mean, take away anything that is present on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side in the exact same form. You should always be able to completely simplify the electrons from both the left-hand side and the right-hand side because you should have multiplied as needed so that you would have the same number on each side. And it's usually pretty common to be able to simplify some other stuff as well. But in this particular redox reaction, it looks like there isn't anything else we can simplify. 
FE2 plus and FE3 plus are two different things, so we can't simplify them. The different charges make them different. CR207 to minus is not present on the right-hand side. 14H plus, also there's no H pluses on the right-hand side. So um, like I said, normally we would be able to simplify some other things, but not in this case. And for balancing this reaction in an acidic solution, this reaction is done. So this is balanced in acidic solution. This would be the answer to balancing this equation in an acidic solution. It's pretty normal for you to also be asked to balance a redox reaction if it were occurring in a basic solution. There are a few different trains of thought um, in terms of what the best way is to balance a reaction in a basic solution. In my personal opinion, if you're being asked to balance a reaction in a basic solution, the easiest strategy is to balance it in an acidic solution first, and once you get it all the way done and balanced in an acidic solution, we're going to do one last step, conversion, to convert it to a basic solution. To make this applicable for a basic solution, we, we can't have any H plus present because that's an acid. We're going to add OH minus to both sides because we don't want to unbalance it in an amount that is equal to our H plus. In this equation, we have 14 H pluses, so that means we want to add 14 OH minuses to both sides of the equation uh, in the amount that is equal to H plus. So I'm going to, I'm gonna do that right now. 6Fe2 plus plus Cr2O7 2 minus plus 14 H plus, and then I'm gonna add my 14 OH minus. And then for my product, 6Fe3 plus 2Cr3 plus 7H2O, and then also don't forget the 14OH minus, adding the 14OH minus to both the left side and the right side so that the equation stays balanced. Now we are going to rewrite um, on either side of the equation, wherever we have both H plus and OH minus, we're gonna rewrite that as H2O. So here we have 14H plus and 14OH minus. We are going to just rewrite that. I'm gonna cross that off. And we're gonna rewrite that as 14 H2O because H plus plus OH minus makes water. 14 H pluses and 14 OH minuses make 14 waters. And the last thing we're going to do is simplify again. Uh, we've already talked about how Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus are different. They don't simplify with each other. Cr207 does not have anything on the right hand side. We have 14 water molecules on the left and we have seven water molecules on the right, which means that we can simplify seven water molecules from each side. So I'm going to take away seven water molecules from each side. This is a little bit messy. These do tend to get a little bit messy, so I'm going to rewrite it one more time. 6Fe2 plus plus Cr2 O7 2 minus plus 7 H2O produces 6 Fe3 plus 2 Cr3 minus 3 plus and 14 OH minus. And this is the equation that is balanced in basic solution.